In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what AWS Fargate is, as it's the second serverless compute service offered by AWS. It's a little bit less known. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of it compared to AWS Lambda. Look at when you should use which for whatever service you have. I'm going to go through the docs, and then I'm also going to show you how you can deploy your own cluster with your Fargate instances using AWS CDK. So I'm going to use a Docker file. It's going to be deployed to ECR. We're going to pull it down, and we're actually going to have an ALB on top of our instance. So stick around for the whole video, because I'm going to show you end-to-end how we can deploy a Fargate service using CDK, monitor the health, use our ALB, and I'm going to show you everything right now. So like I said before, there's two main serverless compute services offered by AWS. The more well-known one is called AWS Lambda, which I think a lot of people are very well aware of when you talk about serverless, it's kind of the first thing that comes to your mind. It made it was made very famous by Vercel because this is what the main engine Vercel uses, but a lot of different companies, services all kind of rely on AWS Lambda just because of how fast, quick, and convenient it is. But the second more, I would say less known service is called AWS Fargate. Now, looking at this documentation about the AWS decision guide between Fargate or Lambda, you can see that they're actually very similar. That's why they're both serverless in terms of reducing operational overhead, pay per use pricing, faster development, high availability, uh, simplified compliance, and you get to focus on the code. But really, the video topic I'll discuss is the main differences between Fargate and Lambda and when you should use which for your own service. So AWS Fargate is a serverless compute engine for containers primarily used with Amazon ECS. It automatically manages your infrastructure, allowing you to focus on deploying and scaling containerized applications. Fargate is ideal for long running applications, microservice or batch processing where you need fine grain control over resource allocation and want to avoid managing underlying services. Now you can really see this breakdown here between Fargate and Lambda with kind of the execution models, the support languages, which is a huge one. Lambda supports uh, a set of runtimes like Node.js, Python, Java, C Sharp, Go, Ruby, and PowerShell. You can do a custom runtime with any language of your choice, but with Fargate, it's a lot more easy. It's any language that can run in a container. Uh, the use cases are long running versus short duration. And you can see, and you can see some more breakdowns Breakdowns here from scaling, cold starts. The Fargate has a much longer cold start versus the Lambda. Uh, execution time limit. So Fargate's actually continuously running. There's no hard limit for uh, how long your execution can last. Whereas with Lambda, you have 50 minutes and that's it. So it's not good for long running applications. Lambda is kind of shorter, something quick, something fast. And the memory allocation with Lambda, you can go up to 10 gigabytes, but with Fargate, you can go uh, up to 120. And there's asterisks all over both of these, but that's kind of a good enough explanation for us to distinguish between using Fargate or Lambda. Now, there's also some differences with the pricing model, like per second billing for Z vCPU and memory use per invocation duration. And the main thing here that I want to say, the pricing model isn't something that you should just kind of ignore because typically because Fargate is longer running, it requires more, you know, muscle memory, more infrastructure. Like I said, it's integrated with Amazon ECS. You typically will be paying a lot more for Fargate. It's, it's known to be a pretty pretty expensive uh, compute service. Whereas with Lambda, you can deploy it and never actually pay anything if nothing's ever in, you know, invoked on your service. Uh, but with Lambda, if you do get a ton of invocations, that's when the price scales uh, with the amount of invocations you get. And deploying your application could be challenging, but it doesn't have to be with today's sponsor, Savala. Savala is an all-in-one platform with no limits. Unlike many other platforms, Savala offers unlimited collaboration with a lot of really cool features that allow you to deploy your services in a very easy and one-click way. Savala offers you a very in-depth dashboard that you can track all your applications, such as Laravel, Next.js, MCP servers, Django, and even static sites like Next.js, blog sites, Astro, or even a Vite and React deployment. These couple with a really healthy way to track your application with pipelines, creating your new app, you have blob storage, and the my favorite part is really creating your own database with one click. You can create a new database, choose what database you want, go with a different version, and you can create it very easy, easily, and it'll connect in your application all on this one beautiful dashboard. So Savala hooked us up with $50 for your first time. So if you have nothing to lose, go ahead and click the link. It's free $50. Deploy something, check it out, see how well and easy it is to spin up all the different things that you need to manage for the infrastructure side for your application.
So you can see in this open directory, I have a bunch of different files. I'm gonna go through these one by one, but I'm not gonna write out every single line of code line by line, just because I think that's gonna defeat the purpose. If you wanna check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. It's gonna take you to the Git repo for this entire project. You can go through them if you want. So let's start off with the main.go. Now this main.go is gonna be a very simple definition. All I'm doing here is spinning up an HTTP server on a specific port and I'm using Qi. If you watched my previous videos before, Qi is my favorite routing library for Go. And I'm setting these three end paths here. This get slash, get slash health and get slash about. Now you can see here, this isn't really good Go code as I'm defining anything in the funk main, but that's not really the point, nor is even the point about the Go programming language. You can write this in any language you want. It could be Python, PHP, JavaScript. It doesn't matter. Anything could be dockerized. And once you can do that, you're able to deploy your code into ECR and pull it down with Fargate. So the purpose of this is just to showcase this is like an HTTP server running my backend code with some routes that we can actually hit and validate to make sure everything ran correctly. Next part is the Docker file. So you can see here, I'm using a very simple two-step image process. One image is just to build everything up, compile it into my binary. As you can see here, this is building my main uh, binary file here. And I have another image that's being used where I'm copying over from my builder image into my actual deployed image it's going to go into ecr it's going to expose my port 8080 it's going to run the command to run the actual binary file so this is pretty simple nothing too crazy here i just have a builder and then i have one that's actually going to be used as the back and service for my application where it gets more interesting is the actual CDK part. So I spun up a CDK uh, package here using the NPX command. And if I go down into my Fargate-go-alb service, you can see here I have quite a few different things that will go through one by one. So starting off, I have the actual definition of my Fargate Go LB stack. I have everything defined here. So it's it's a one-shop deployment. I have my VPC I'm creating, my cluster, and I have this repository. So my ECR repository is actually already existing. That's why I'm using the from repository name function here. I'm not creating a new one. And you can see here, I have it go-fargate-app. I have my URI, uh, with the time it was created, and this is basically already deployed on my AWS console. So going back, I have my task role, I have my execution roles. These are all kind of needed for uh, ECR as well as Fargate. And then I have my task definition here. So I'm using a memory limit of 512 megabytes, 256 CPU. Uh, I'm passing the task role and execution roles. I'm doing off of ECS Fargate task definition. So you can have different options off the ECS object from uh, the AWS SDK, but I am using Fargate as we've defined in this video. And you can see here, I have my container. So my task definition, uh, it's pulling the image from that ECR um, uh, repository up here, logging it, just adding some prefixes and exposing the port, which matches the actual port from my Docker file just up here. And then kind of wrapping it up, I have the new actual Fargate service. So I'm defining the cluster, the actual task definition, the desired count of them of tasks that can be spun up at a given time for my service, and then the service name itself. And then I also have this application load balancer. I think I'll... ALBs are much easier to use for NLB specific because you don't have to deal with layer seven. But for this app, this application load balance is not really doing anything. It's in the same VPC and it's going to allow me just to make some HTTP curls. As you can see here, I'm adding a listener for port 80 for specifically only HTTP and not HTTPS. So mind you, when you are going through this uh, tutorial and you want to spin up yourself and HTTPS is not working, you are going to have to do some extra added work here to add the target group and listeners. But I think this should be relatively easy. You can probably just quickly uh, GPT that if you have to. So one thing I will bring up that's kind of needed, and this is kind of like a gotcha, is the actual health check. So for the add targets, I have a path called slash health. So if you remember in my main.go, I have a slash health function here that just basically says service is healthy. It's going to give you a status 200. And this is actually needed for your tasks because if you don't have this, your tasks are going to give either an unhealthy or an unknown health status, which is going to bubble up to your ALB. And basically your deployments are going to go through because Fargate and ECS, I believe, need the tasks to have a healthy status before giving a healthy, successful deployment. So you might get stuck over uh, waiting for something to be deployed on CloudFormation. So be aware that make sure you have a proper health check path and it's easily accessible with a simple get call. So another file that I really like is my make file. Now I know a lot of people hate make files. Personally, I think they're great for orchestrating and organizing my CDK calls, but it's totally up to you. The main thing I wanna highlight is I have three main uh, commands here, build, push, and deploy. 
The build command simply builds my Docker image uh, to Linux and AMD 64. I'm on Mac OS, so I actually need to specify the platform flag. Um, and sometimes depending on the image, it could be really slow. So you might have to create like a CI CD. Uh, let me know if you wanna see how to do that. Let me know in the comment section down below. The next command I have is the make push command. So that's gonna take that built image and deploy it into the ECR URI. As I already showed you, I've already created this before using the AWS CLI. You can do it on console, whatever um, I've already created before. So I don't have this kind of chicken and egg problem with my CDK stack deployments. And then lastly, my push command. So this is actually push everything is going to deploy the actual stack as you can see here, and we can follow it in cloud formation. Okay, so the first command I'm going to do is make build. So I'm going to run this command, I'm going to already build the image you can see here. And then I'm going to push this to ECR using my make push command. So I'm going to get tag it with the latest tag. All right, and then I'm going to do make deploy to actually deploy this stack into my AWS account. Okay, so going back to ECS, you can see here now I'm under clusters, you can go to the Go Fargate cluster, I have my two running tasks here, and you can click the actual service and get more information. So the health metrics, the monitoring of it, you know, CPU utilization, memory utilization. Uh, we'll start to go uh, the load balancers, my ALB. You can click this, uh, you can see it's active, all the hosted zones, the VPC, everything's kind of uh, great. You can see my HTTP 80, so it's forwarding all the calls, all the HTTP calls. And if you go back, you can see the actual task definition. So there's two tasks all running. Uh, you can actually click into it, see the logs, you can go deeper. Uh, so that's, you know, this is kind of a showcasing a healthy deployment on Fargate. Now we can actually go ahead and curl these using simple curl commands back on our terminal. Um, I actually almost forgot. So to curl that, you need the actual ALB, not the ARN, but the DNS. So you can see here, if you click back into the load balancer, into the ALB, you'll see the DNS name here. So this is the A record that's generated by AWS. And if you go back, you can do curl. You can just drop that and you can see here, message hello. So this is the actual slash hello. So I go back into, or just the slash path. So here, hello from ECS Fargate running. And you can see here, the same thing. So we now we can connect to it from creating simple curls from our terminal. I can go even once further do slash health like so. You can see here service is healthy. So I've proven that we can actually communicate with this. If you go into monitoring, you can see we will have our invocations here. If I probably change the granularity here in the last three minutes. And here you can see the actual request coming in through our ALB. So you can see everything's working and everything's monitoring. Oh, and I actually almost forgot to show you guys. So there's going to be a lot of people that are going to ask, like, how do you uh, delete this? Because it's going to cost money if you leave it running. Um, so you can use the CDK, CDK destroy. So use your profile, your region, whatever. Go into your CDK uh, directory and write the CDK destroy force. And I'll delete all the resources part of the actual cloud formation. So you go here, go to CFN cloud formation. You can see the stack name Fargate go LB stack and all the resources here. You'll be able to destroy them with that command. So make sure you do that. And if you don't, don't blame me for any uh, bills you get. Not my fault. See you later. Stick around for the end of the video. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave a comment down below what you think. What other videos would you like to see me make? I'm very interested in like CDK topics, exploring more Fargate, Lambda topics, maybe comparing different runtimes. So if anything like that is something you're interested in watching, let me know in the comments comment section down below and make sure you comment like and subscribe for more uh you hopefully you guys enjoy this and i'll see you guys in the next video peace